So um, I invite the next one. Uh, so the, the paper is entitled Exploring Emotional Prototypes in a High Dimensional TTS Latent Space. And the, the talk will be given by Paul. Yes. So. Welcome. Yeah, welcome to our presentation, Exploring Emotional Prototypes in, um, high uh, in a <coughs> TTS Latent Space. Uh, in our work, we search a prosodic latent space in a trained global style token Tekatron model, short GST Tekatron, to explore prototypes of emotional prosody. Um, historically, there are a few milestones in the development of TTS systems. One major milestone was, of course, the introduction of end-to-end -end trained TTS si systems that allow you to create re very realistic human-like speech. And more recently, <coughs> um, a TTS systems incorporate some prosodic latent space that allow you to create prosodically varied speech. While such systems can vary prosody, it's often unclear how to meaningfully change prosody. Um, for example, how can we make a speaker sound angry? In normal life, how we say things is related to what we say, so learning how we can meaningfully change prosody is the next logical step. Um, in this work, we search the prosodic latent space to explore the prototypes of emotional prosody. So, <clears throat> in order to do so, we need to solve two problems. Uh, first, we need to come up with a principled way how to efficiently search the prosodic space, as there is a very large number of possible combinations uh, we need to explore. And second, we need to find a formal description, which we call parameterization, uh, that allows to efficiently search the space. We'll start off with the first problem. Um, GIP sampling with people, short GSP, is an adaptive procedure that allows participants to iter iteratively change one latent acoustic uh, dimension at a time. Um, <clears throat> the participant sees a slider with the prompt to adjust the slider to make the speaker, in this case, sound sad as possible. By moving the slider, uh, we change one dimension at a time while all other dimensions stay constant. When the participant releases the slider, the recording plays and this reflects the current slider position. Yeah, um, the same slider position is shown to multiple participants, uh, in, our particip uh, in our experiment to five people and we take me, uh, the median response. Uh, and we do this because we want to avoid to get stuck in some very extreme part of the stimulus space. Um, and the idea is here that we only uh, uh, take a very extreme value as if it's chosen by multiple participants. Um, <clears throat> maybe one question that might come up, why median and not mean? Um, yeah, the problem is that while the sliders we will be using are roughly linear, they are not exactly linear. And we basically wanted that the slider snaps to certain slider positions. So basically that the median we obtain is really exactly the sound the participant selected. Okay, before uh, we start the first iteration, all dimensions are initialized. And this can be done by either picking a completely random point in the stimulus space or um, picking some kind of zero point reflecting some kind of neutral starting position. And uh, these median aggregated responses from the participants are then passed to the next iter iterations and so forth. Uh, this process is happening within a chain, and at each iteration, only one dimension is changed, uh, while all other dimensions stay constant. And we basically keep repeating this process, and this allows us uh, to approximate the prototype, so for example, the prototype of anger. Okay, so we solved uh, <laughs> the first problem, more or less, um, and now we have, a, so um, now we need to make sure our space is compatible with this uh, GIP sampling with people. And there are a few requirements for GIP sampling with people. So first we need to make sure that, um, that the, the dimensions are roughly um, um, independent. So this means that um, not all uh, uh, prosodic dimensions basically uh, apply the same prosodic manipulation. So they should have distinct styles in a way. Um, second, we need to make sure that the dimensions are perceptually aligned. So this means that an individual's uh, uh, um, um, Individual slider manipulations will result in some kind of intuitive changes. So, for example, if I move the slider to the right, it should maybe amplify the effect, whereas, whereas move it to the left, it should reduce the effect. Um, first, uh, of a third, um, <clears throat> because the uh, experiment is happening in real time, we need to synthesize the stimuli in a reasonable amount of time. And uh, finally, we need a good uh, uh, um, uh, balance between expressivity and the number of dimensions. So, this means um, uh, that we want a relatively no, low number of dimensions that capture a large as possible prosodic expressivity. And the cool thing is that GC Tekatron um, <clears throat> is suitable by design. Um, so um, 
the cool thing about GSD Techotron is that it can learn distinct speaking styles, as we saw in the original paper. Um, and also, as we, they showed in the paper, is that you can sh uh, sc scale these different speaking styles. And also, the, speak the, the scaling roughly aligns to some kind of perceptual qualities of the voice. Um, using Griffin Lin, or uh, we use Griffin Lin, but you could also take some vocoders that can synthesize stimuli very fast. And um, <clears throat> Um, the cool thing also is that while those uh, learned speaking styles sound very distinct, you do not need a very large number of them. So we also use 10 uh, uh, speaking styles, and that already allows you to cover a large part of this prosodic space. Okay, I will briefly talk about GC Tekatron. GC Tekatron is an expressive TTS model, like you probably all know. Uh, it's an extension of Tekatron that learns the TTS past uh, TTS talks solely on a pair of um, recordings and transcripts. I will briefly repeat, like, uh, uh, briefly talk you through the architecture or the extension of the uh, um, global style um, token. So there's basically this reference encoder which compresses the spectrogram to a fixed length embedding. And uh, this fixed length embedding is then passed to the style token layer, uh, which consists of a multi-head attention. Um, we use four attention heads uh, as in the original paper. And before the training starts, a bank of embeddings uh, called global style tokens is randomly initialized and learning uh, and learned during training. Um, <clears throat> each um, each head gives an attention weight to the, to uh, to each learned global style token. So the given attention is somewhat like a similarity metric uh, of compressed uh, of the compressed spectrogram uh, and each of the global style tokens. A weighted average um, over global style tokens is then computed, where the different attention heads are concatenated. Uh, this array is then called uh, a style embedding. Together with the text uh, and the style embedding, we obtain the predicted spectrograms, and the spectrograms are then used uh, to compute the loss during training. Here we use Griffin Lin, like I said, to reconstruct the phase information from the spectrogram and synthesize the sound. Um, we also trained uh, on the uh, Blizzard Challenge 2013 corpus, as in the original paper, but also because it consists of a large set of prosodically varied uh, sentences spoken by a single speaker. And we trained our model for 380,000 epochs, as we didn't observe any further uh, improvements. Also, the hyperparameters are identical to Wang et al. Um, so the um, which. Uh, so the model uh, supports two ways of inference. First, it can uh, extract the weight from uh, from some reference sound, which is identical to the procedure we, has, we saw in training. So uh, we obtain a fixed length embedding from the uh, uh, of, the st of the spectrogram using the reference encoder. We pass it through the style token layer and we get the style embedding. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is, it, is to manually set uh, the weights. And in our experiments, um, we use the second way. So we use participants to directly modify the weight of a given global, global style token. Yeah, in the main experiment, uh, 130 US uh, uh, participants, uh, or online US participants on Mechanical Turk, collaboratively changed the speech prosody of three sentences for the emotions anger, happiness, uh, um, and sadness. And uh, the sentences are phonetically balanced and are semantically neutral, um, we, and are selected from the Harvard sentence corpus. Um, when each when initializing the chain, we select one sentence and the target emotion. In the case, in this case, uh, uh, the happy uh, and happy chain for the sentence, the pencils have all been used. Initially, we set the attention the attention weight to zero, which reflects a relatively neutral starting point, and each chain starts with a random starting dimension. Um, here, we start with uh, um, dimension i. <clears throat> As explained earlier, we present the same slider to multiple participants, and we pass the mean answer to the next iteration. The participants set the attention values in a range which corresponds to a 94 uh, which corresponds to the 94 percent confidence interval of attention values in the train corpus. This was basically a trade-off to uh, maximize expressivity while minimizing distortions. Um, we apply principal component analysis in all style embeddings at once, um, and we can look how the PCA is evolving over iterations. And the color dots represent uh, different intended emotions. As we, and if, as we can see in the first iterations, pretty much is happening. But after seven iterations, 
Um, different intended emotions obtain a relatively fixed position on the first two principal components, uh, indicating a relatively early convergence. Uh, this indicates that particular uh, regions of the model's latent space are reliably associated with particular emotions uh, or with a particular emotion. An additional classification analysis confirms that 79.4% of all uh, uh, stimuli are assigned with the intended emotion, which is far above chance level, which would be 33.3%. Um, yeah, let's listen to some examples. <clears throat> Here's the, an example for the neutral sample. Pick a card and slip it under the pack. Pick a card and slip it under the pack. Pick a card and slip it under the pack. Pick a card and slip it under the pack. Um, and we furthermore applied this to completely novel uh, sentences also from the Harvard corpus, and we can li listen to some of those transferred prosodies. Take the match and strike it against your shoe. Take the match and strike it against your shoe. Take the match and strike it against your shoe. In a separate validation experiment, 82, uh, again, online US participants raised how well, sam uh, how well samples matched each emotion on a four point uh, scale. This means that each stimulus created in the main experiment was rated on all three emotions and <clears throat> only allowed. Uh, and, and not only on the intended uh, emotion of the chain. This allowed us to compute the so-called contrast. This is the difference between ratings between the intended and the not intended emotions. We also obtained ratings for stimuli with randomized attention weights, as well as for the initial neutral recordings. Uh, they both have a contrast of around zero, which reflects the chance level. Uh, and as we can see in the figure, the contrast steadily increases over the course of uh, iterations. Above and beyond, the transfer prosody obtains a similarly high contrast as for the, uh, uh, as, as for the uh, sentences the emotional prototype was developed for. So we can, in our experiment, we saw that we obtain a similarly high contrast for transfer prosody. Um, however, there are a few limitations of our work. Um, first, um, while those produced uh, recordings are well recognized, they might be very st stereotypical and might not fully represent how emotions are communicated in real life. Um, this issue could be addressed by replacing emotion labels with uh, scenarios of real life situations. Uh, furthermore, um, the parameterization of the latent space could be improved. In the present work, each head received the same attention weight uh, for, the, uh, for the same global style token. So uh, future work could just relax this constraint. Furthermore, um, when using different expressive uh, TTS models such as Flowtron or Mellotron, it would require a uh, parameterization of the latent spaces, it doesn't work out of the box. Um, uh, third, there's a, uh, as I mentioned earlier, when defining the range of the dimensions, there's a trade off between expressivity and naturalness of the stimulus. And the more expressive the stimulus is, the, the higher the risk of artifacts in the sound. And here we chose to maximize expressivity, but future work, work should definitely explore this trade off. Finally, um, we only tested on a very limited population from the US. And future, should definitely, uh, future work should definitely test more heterogeneous populations and also train on different corpora. All in all, GSP in combination with uh, uh, GST Tecatron seems to be a useful and efficient tool for studying emotional prototypes, for exploring speaking styles in existing TTS systems, and for generating new emotional sentences. Um, we look forward to your questions and also feel free to contact us if you're interested in collaborating. That's it. <laughs> So we have uh, a lot of time for questions, so perhaps I will have time to <laughs> question. So, but is there anybody from, from the floor for the uh, in-presence audience? Everything was clear, no suggestions? <laughs> oh, you have a question. Um, thank you for your talk. Uh, you said um, you used training data from the Blizzard Challenge 2013, yes. which is um, audiobooks, I believe? No, uh, it's uh, it? uh, Catherine something, like a professional actor of one. Okay, and were the emotions oh, already audiobooks. labeled? Sorry, uh, yeah, uh, you asked if they are audiobooks. Yeah, so, yeah, sorry, they, are. they are audiobooks, yes. So are the individual sentences already labeled with the emotions? No, or no, 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 no. So the, basically the idea was you take some very prosodically varied corpus, you train on it, so you, you're, you're your global style token basically learn different prosodic styles and okay. you then sample from it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I have a question. Yes. So 
Your problem is very identical to the search of a cri criminal mm. in forensic uh, kit or police sketch, mm -hmm. okay? And so, um, uh, in the old times, not so far, uh, the idea was really to separate the face in different components mm -hmm. and to also to search uh, the, to, with the nearest uh, gaze, uh, eyes, mm -hmm. the nearest morphology of the lower face and so on, and you end up by, uh, you know, perhaps uh, find the criminal. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, they don't perform this way. Uh, they use, um, uh, how to say, face generator. Mm -hmm. They span, in fact, the, uh, the, the whole, uh, the, the whole uh, space and they ask, they propose four candidates, mm -hmm. and uh, they just ask every uh, witness mm -hmm. to, uh, to, um, to, to choose the nearest one. Mm -hmm. And after just a very few iterations, I was very surprised by four or five, you, they end up with a very, very, uh, mm -hmm. very close. Uh, so, yeah, so that's my question. Uh, do you think it will converge uh, perhaps you, you, are, you, can, you can have this, these two options, so either the old way mm -hmm. you are doing, sorry, uh, and, and perhaps to, to, have a, to have a first a PCA or whatever, uh, so uh, explore in fact the, the, uh, the embeddings of the, uh, of the Latin space mm -hmm. and to have this idea of, uh, you know, uh, displacement but, but which is in this uh, multi-space uh, direction. So, yeah, we uh, actually experimented with it. Yeah, you experimented yeah. with it? But okay. th because the Global Style Tongues already learned different prosodic styles, it worked already pretty well. <laughs> so, yeah. and, and it gave us so, better results, so that's why we took it. But um, like in our original uh, Gibbs sampling with people paper, we did it also with a style GAN, yeah. where you use PCA on the style yeah. GAN, which is nice because it gives you like interpretable sliders. Yeah. And also to come back to your thing with, like you proposed like a binary choice paradigm, but this in a way is much more efficient because you can basically have a slide over the whole dimension. So you can just explore all options at once yeah. and then pick the one. So you're not like, because otherwise you, you like, for example, reverse correlation is also an example where you have like all these choices and it's super yeah. slow. Mm -hmm. And that's an advantage of this uh, um, method. Good. So we have, uh, we have a, uh, on, uh, a remote question by Kenneth Church. If you manipulate prosody too much, do you see more artifacts? Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> yes. Answer yes. Yes, yes yeah. Uh, but that was the, also if you listen to uh, some of our demos, like they, they are on, online. Um, like, especially a sad thing, people really go to very extreme parts of the simulus oh. space. So it's almost sounds like crying. Like, oh. um, yeah. But so so the, the starting point of the next uh, listener. Is exactly the point, or you just have I don't know 0 0.5 or 0 0.6? How do you mean starting point of a? Because you, you so you ask a listener, a listener to, uh, to 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 displace, uh, and the next is starting from that point. To, uh, to, so to basically, at every iteration, so we uh, the, 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 the I didn't tell you that, but at the it, it, the slider moves towards a, a random position, and also we force participants to explore the space. So you cannot continue until you played around with different positions. No, but uh, so you have uh, the first listener is manipulating one one uh, one slider, one dimension. Yes. The second is uh, manipulating uh, the, uh, another slider. Yeah, actually, but starting uh, from the previous one. Yes, exactly. That okay. similar that dimension is fixed. While that, so you can imagine that you you uh, somehow in the, the first one indicates a direction. Yeah. So you are not forced to to take a point uh, one point. Uh, you can wait, in fact, this direction so that to. Uh, avoid, uh, you know, a very uh, too much. Ah, yeah, 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 exactly. So yeah. to have some kind of... Uh, That's true. And there's also like this median aggregation is also like yeah. a way to, yeah. uh, to regularize this because like if someone tends to give very extreme answers, this is only, like if this is only one person, you will not end up in this space. So last question on, on, the, uh, on the side. D did you, uh, by Samuel uh, de Lales, uh, did you explore changing the number of GST weights? And did you find some weights which are more effective or um, get more effect on such or such emotion? So, so do you think he meant like more uh, uh, global more style tokens? Or, yeah, so more global style tokens, yeah, like yeah. 12? Um, yeah, we didn't experiment with it because we just wanted to replicate. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so thank you. But that's definitely future work. Yeah, that's yeah, 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 sure, sure. Come again. Thank you. <laughs>